A Violin for Elba by Mary Lynn Ray. Above the ruffle of talk and the rustle of dresses, Elba heard music. Later, she didn't say she had been watching through a hedge. All she told her parents was, I want a violin. She asked them both. She asked with pleas, but they hadn't heard what Elva heard, and they said no. So she pretended. When she should have been brushing her teeth, Elva was rehearsing for recitals. When she could have been learning subtraction, or should have been going to sleep, she was playing music only she could hear. Summer, autumn, winter, spring, Elva played, and Elva grew. She outgrew her sleeves, outgrew her shoes. She grew until she was a grown-up, and outgrew her violin. Now she had a briefcase and a job. She had appointments and important meetings. But if she saw a page tremulous with music, she remembered what she once had wanted. I'm much too busy, Elva said, though she began to borrow records from the library downtown. At home, she listened to them, and then she felt she had picked up her violin again. Sometimes she was the whole string section of the Philharmonic, all those elbows going up and down. Other times she played alone. But the music stopped when the record stopped, and silence filled the room. Elva had a dog for conversation, but conversation with her dog couldn't cover up the quiet. She kept chocolates for refreshment, but chocolates couldn't fill the empty feeling. Well, I have things to do, said Elva, and she did them. So summer, autumn, winter, spring, the years went by. Elva had many satisfactions and achievements. Only one was missing. I'm too old now, she told her dog. But more and more she kept imagining what might have been. Until one day she took a breath and took her purse and bought a shiny, fragile, varnished violin. At home, Elva studied how to hold it. Then she lifted it against her shoulder and clamped it with her chin. She pushed the bow across a string. Squeak! She tried again. Squeak! So Elva tried something else. She drew the bow back towards her, and the string sang. A single note was not exactly music, but it gave her expectations. Feeling bold, she tried a different string. The bow bucked. The dog slid under the sofa. But Elva played her one note again and was encouraged. I will improve, she said. But she didn't. It wasn't easy. Holding the bow correctly, landing on the right notes, fig figuring out flats and sharps. I will improve, she said. But still, she didn't. So Elva sadly snapped the case and put away her violin. Then one day she heard that Madame Josefina was accepting beginning students. And again she took a breath and took her purse and bought a course of lessons. Every Tuesday, every Thursday, Elva came to Madame Josefina. On the days between, she practiced. Then there was a recital. All the students had to perform on stage. Everyone was nervous, especially Elva. But she drew the bow against the strings, and in that moment, something happened. Elva was making music. She came right home, and lifting her violin, she played for her dog. Then she played again for herself, and again, and again, and again, until at last, Elva kissed her bow and went to bed, imagining all the tomorrows, and all the music there was to make. The end.